So pretty critical in the van is, uh, is our electrical setup. And when we're out camping, particularly free camping, we just want the fridge to remain cold at the end of the day. So it's often a good idea to install a second battery. This particular vehicle has, has a really special second battery. Fridge is on, six degrees, coming down to a target of, uh, of about three degrees. Light is on in here, so we can see the, the light is on. The fridge is cooling. It's down to six, what are we set a target? Actually, minus two is a target just for the moment for the purpose of this exercise. And we've got it set to Celsius, we've got it set to a low voltage cutoff. Why are we doing low voltage cutoff? Because of our special battery inside. Let's go take a look. We have in the past looked at the portable lift-in, lift-out batteries, but in this particular case, the owners will have this van for a very long time and they want to have a, a, a permanent setup that doesn't take up any space in the van. Often a bit of space that is lost to any sort of storage is under the seats. So we've installed our second batteries under the seats here. So the, the second battery is here under this seat and here we have the charger. So let's just have a look down in here first. We can see down in here is the uh, the projector IDC 25L and the L is the key to what's going on here. It's the lithium battery So we have a 25 amp DC to DC charger with inbuilt solar regulator and a connected Anderson plug so that we can connect up the solar panel uh, Which can be an unregulated solar panel because we already have a regulator inside the um, Inside the charger we have some heavy-duty cabling running from the front down to here uh, to, to charge the second battery. Furthermore, it's a smart DC to DC charger because this vehicle is equipped with blue motion. Uh, so some of the fuel saving technologies, which includes turning the alternator off from time to time, but the but this particular charger will, will deal with the smart alternators. So, um, so that means we can charge our battery under here at a rate of 25 amps. And... Um, uh, we can charge the uh, we can charge this at 25 amps. So this is a hundred amp hour lithium battery. So pretty pretty sensational at 100 amp hours. We had originally planned to put a 50 amp hour into this, which is a bit more reasonably priced because uh, 100 amp hours are still pretty pricey. But um, we got fortunate and we were able to put a 100 amp hour battery into this particular vehicle. Now what is interesting here compared to our traditional setups is we often want to know what is going on with the battery and here on this particular uh, app we can see what's going on we can see there's minus 3.2 amps being drawn right now the battery temps 29.4 and we have a battery voltage of over 13 volts and we can come back to this screen and see it's in discharge at the moment this makes sense because the engine is not running this we're on indoors here there's no solar panel the fridge is running and we have a, a discharge there of minus 3.2 amps the fridge, the Dometic Waco CF35 fridge, should be drawing 3.3 amps minus. So for it to show 3.2 is pretty accurate as to what. I'm just going to turn the lights on. And let's just see if that changes at all. The LED lights probably won't make a massive change, but here we go, minus 3.7 now. So I can see I'm drawing a little bit more from the um, from the battery. And we'll go back here and we can still see we're at 99%. It's actually even reporting it's just over 100 amps there of, of capacity in this battery. And uh, this is really nice because uh, whether under our awning, uh, driving along, we can just see, uh, the passenger can see that, you know, what the status of the battery is and make sure everything's charging. If I have my solar panel, you know, in the east in the morning and in the west in the afternoon, I can check the solar panels in a good position because I'll start to see positive amps coming into the battery, topping up the battery when I'm free camping. Why would I choose a really expensive lithium battery over the deep cycle uh, amorphous class MAT batteries or AGM batteries? The reason I would choose this is, is, is a few fold. The first one is, the most critical one in my opinion, is we get allowed to discharge the lithium batteries to virtually zero. So a common problem with uh, deep cycle batteries, if we don't manage the battery correctly uh, and let the battery discharge over 50%, we can actually damage the deep cycle battery. So, uh, so a 100 amp hour uh, deep cycle battery gives us about 50 usable amp hours before we really need to be getting charged back into there before we um, have any sort of uh, issues with the battery itself. And lithium allows us to discharge, some people tell me down 90%, some even down to 0%. The manufacturer of this particular battery, Sentry, that we're using uh, is it's an IEC rated battery for automotive applications and uh, is allowed to discharge down to zero. 
So if we fully discharge this battery, we will not damage the health of it. It has an extremely slow self-discharge rate if it's not used, if the vehicle stored for six months, it has an extremely slow self-discharge. But if we accelerate that discharge by running the fridge for weeks without recharging the battery and exhaust it entirely, we will not damage the battery. The next interesting thing about it is uh, the lithium batteries allow us to recharge 2,200 times is the rating, whereas a deep cycle battery is 800 times. So that's almost three times as many recharges. So even though the battery may cost three times as much, we do not need to, need to keep replacing it. And the other significant, the third significant one is this app that we just looked at earlier. Uh, it's got integrated battery management. So with our normal batteries, we normally have to have a separate battery monitor and every single power consumer, the lights, the fridge, the sink pumps, etc., have to run through what's called a shunt to measure all the amps coming in and out. Well, for all of our auxiliary items, they're actually being powered off this battery, so it wouldn't be great if we could have the battery manager in the battery itself, which we do in the lithium uh, century batteries with the Bluetooth battery monitoring system. So there's some of the reasons why we use the lithium battery, and we can achieve uh, lithium batteries that fit under this seat in 50 amp hours, a little bit more affordable, still giving us a good 45 to 50 usable amps, uh, or in this particular case, the luxury of 100 amp hours giving us 100 amps. So that's, uh, this, this vehicle is good for days and days, and if it's a solar panel uh, connected to it, which this one's prepared for, it, it, we can be indefinitely out in the bush, um, uh, able, to, um, able to run the fridge. And furthermore, with a 25 amp uh, IDC 25 L underneath that passenger seat here, if I run the engine for two hours, I'll, I'll be putting a good 50 amps back into the battery anyway. So how good is that? So that's a, that's a look at, uh, at the auxiliary uh, battery system permanently mounted under the seats and in this case with lithium we could of course put a conventional battery under here as well with a conventional charge as well. Thanks for watching.